Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked lots of little questions, especially about formulating, manufacturing, and small brand queries. So today's video is to help you with some of those frequently asked questions, particularly for small brands. First, let's take a look at some formulation specific questions. So I get a lot of people watching the videos, thank you. But I get asked a lot about changing some ingredients in the formulas. So can I use a different emulsifier? Can I use a different preservative? Can I use a different wax? Now the answer really is it depends. There's some formulas and some videos where I specifically state that this is a really important ingredient for this particular type of formulation, in which case changing that ingredient out may not be the easiest thing to do. But if you're a small brand or making product for yourself in a small capacity and you're purchasing ingredients from small suppliers, then sometimes you can change the materials for other forms of that material. But when will it work and when will it not work? Well, again, it kind of depends on the formula. So what I've done is I've brought out a workshop series. These are workshops that need to be purchased, but if you specifically want to find out, can I use a different gum or can I use a different preservative or can I use a different emulsifier? And you really want to know from the various small suppliers that you can purchase from, they are the ideal workshops because in the workshops I have some summary tables and I talk through all of the different materials and when they can be changed for others and what they're best suited to. So if you're new to formulating and you just want some help swapping out ingredients from different small suppliers, they're fantastic workshops to get you started. I often get asked, how do I set up my lab? Well, we have some great videos on equipment for you. And we also have a video where I take you through my lab and give you a bit of a first hand view. Now your lab doesn't have to be sterile, but it should be extremely clean. And I have a video showing you how I keep my lab clean. A couple of things to be very careful with are your water supply and your air supply, as well as making sure you clean all your equipment thoroughly and store it carefully between use. Another question I get asked a lot about is, do I need to do stability testing, especially if I'm a small brand? Does it really matter? Well, in some parts of the world, stability results are required with your product when you go to market. In other parts of the world, while the regulations don't specifically state that stability results are required, you are required, even as a very small brand, even just selling online or at markets or to family and friends, if you're selling product, you are required to ensure the product is safe and stable and suitable for that consumer. And of course, how can you know that your product's gonna be safe and stable and suitable for use if you don't conduct stability testing? So in other words, the very short answer is yes, you are still required to do stability testing even if you are a small brand because it is your responsibility, even at a very, very small level, to make sure that that product is safe, stable, and suitable to use. Now, I have a great overview video going through some of the information about what is stability testing and what is usually involved. And I have another video about some equipment that you can use to conduct stability testing. And if you do want to learn more, we do have some online study only, as well as online full certificate options for you to learn how to conduct stability testing for yourself. Now for some manufacturing questions. I often get asked, how do I set up my manufacturing area? Well, this is not as simple to answer as just sending you to a video like I have for my lab. Manufacturing areas do need to comply with good manufacturing practice, whether you're in a region of the world that requires you to have that license or not. But we have a fantastic workshop that has room layouts, it has cleaning guides, it has a lot of other specifications for you to set up your manufacturing area, and you can purchase this workshop easily online. But before you go and set up your manufacturing area, please consider, is manufacturing the right thing for you? I do have a free video where I look at, should you manufacture your own products? So please watch that video first, and if you still think that manufacturing is the right way for you to go for your brand, 
then that manufacturing workshop is a very cheap and easy way to find out what you need to do to set up your manufacturing area. This leads me on to the next question really well. I often get asked, do I need to have a manufacturing license? Well, in some parts of the world, you do. For example, in EU and some parts of Asia, you need to have a GMP license to manufacture your own products. So please check with your local country regulators or get in touch with us for some consulting advice about this. For other parts of the world like US, Australia and New Zealand, no, you don't need a GMP license, but you still need to manufacture to good manufacturing practice standards. And that's where that manufacturing workshop can really help get you started. Now for some label and brand management questions. I get asked a lot, do I need to have my street address on the label or is a PO box enough? Pretty much around the world, you need a street address. You need a street address of the country where the product is getting sold so that if there is an issue with the product, regulators can get in touch with you by writing. A PO box is not sufficient. This is a bit of a misunderstanding for small brands who've seen other small brands use a PO box address on their label. It's not sufficient and it's not compliant. Make sure you use a street address on your label. It is required pretty much around the world that regulators can get in touch with you in the local region should they need to. I also get asked, do the same rules that apply to the big brands apply to the small brands? I mean, how are we gonna keep up with that? The short answer is yes, the same rules apply to you, whether you're selling to just family and friends, if you're selling products, the same rules apply as they do for the bigger brands. It means you are responsible for the compliance, safety and suitability of that product, no matter who you sell it to. If you're selling product, make sure you comply with the regulations, including all of your claims, labels, quality, safety and stability requirements, because even as a very, very small brand, the same rules apply to you as they do for the big guys. And if you're worried about how you can do it cost effectively, we have loads of free videos as well as workshops and full certificate courses so you can learn to take care of a lot of these compliance requirements for yourself. Just get in touch with us, we're happy to help. And of course, search the YouTube channel. I have loads of topics out there to get you started and understanding what you might need to do to comply should you want to take it further. I often get asked, do I have to register my cosmetic products? It depends on where you are in the world. In the EU and some parts of Asia, yes, you need to register your products with your local regulatory authority. Again, please get in touch with your local regulatory authority and check the regulations if it applies to you or contact us if you need some consulting advice. In the US, Australia and New Zealand, for example, you don't need to register your cosmetic products, but you still need to comply with all of the regulations, which includes being responsible for the formula, the product, safety, quality, labels and claims applying to your product. So while you don't need to register, you still need to make sure your product fully complies. And of course, in some parts of the world, you do need to register the product first. So make sure you're sure about this before you venture forward with your brand. I often get asked, do I need to use inky names on my labels or where can I find inky names? Well, for EU, Asia and most parts of the world, Inky names can be found very easily on the COS Ing website and they should be used. Just be careful because in the US you should be using CTFA nomenclature. And some inky names are a little different for China, so you'll need to speak with a Chinese regulatory agent for further guidance there. Your label should be written in the local language. And of course, if you have an English translation, you need to make sure that your English translation does not contradict with the local language translation. So there you go. There's answers to some of the very common questions we get here, especially for the small brands. I hope you found this video useful. Please contact us if you'd like this information in writing and some links to where you can find more information. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. 
Happy formulating!